What's up, YouTube family? This is your man, Pristine, back with another video. Welcome to the Pristine Review for the new G3. Now, some might argue that this is the best budget phone in the game right now, and for understandable reasons. Um, a lot of the top budget devices that are out there, obviously, you know, they're a top budget device because of price and how they perform given the price point. Um, and also, you want to factor in a lot of the features and functions that a lot of these devices also come with because a lot of these budget devices are being nowadays packed with mid-range and flagship caliber um, features and functions. And so it's a clear indication that you no longer have to spend top dollar and break the bank or if you're balling like that still. You don't have to spend a boatload of cash to get a good smartphone experience. And I think that the new Mobile G3 is another uh, example of that here. Um, now, the price of this phone is $199, and I've seen it on sale. The cheapest I've seen this phone was $179.99, so 20, 20 bucks off. Um, now, for $199, you're getting a 5.7-inch 720p display which looks damn good in my personal opinion it doesn't have to be 1080p doesn't have to be quad hd or 4k display this display is absolutely gorgeous everything is crystal clear everything's nice and sharp colors are nice and vibrant as they ought to be and you know the screen gets extremely bright i mean i think the nits top out at like 700 if I'm not mistaken, I mean, this phone gets extremely bright. I mean, so viewing angles and things of that nature aren't going to be a problem. We've got 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of onboard storage. We've got a MediaTek Helio P25 processor in, uh, processor in here. Um, we've got a... We've got a 3,000 milliamp hour non-removable battery, and we also have a Type-C USB connector port. Now... We're looking at some things that are uncharted territory for a price or a phone in this particular price point. Typically, phones that are one ninety nine, specifically referring to the Honor Seven X, referring to the Huawei Mate SE, referring to the um, the Xiaomi Redmi Five Plus. Even though the Redmi Five Plus is four gigs of RAM and sixty four gigs of onboard storage, it still has that old school micro USB port along with the Huawei Mate SE and the Honor 7X, which the um, the Honor 7X comes with 32 gigs of storage and three gigs of RAM. Um, so, you know, for 189 here on the new Mobile G3, I mean, you know, you're, you're, getting, you're, you're getting a little more bang for your buck there. Um, and so that definitely is something that you'd want to um, definitely pay attention to if you're considering this particular device. Um, now, performance, as I mentioned, I mean, you know, we've got a, a MediaTek Helio P25 processor coupled with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of onboard storage. Now, the storage can be expanded up to 128 gigs. You do have a micro SD card slot um, to be able to expand that memory. And performance, I got to say has been buttery smooth in my personal opinion and it's interesting because i have looked at some other reviews on this particular device and you know some people haven't had the best experience with it but what i would recommend people is before you listen to me or what any other reviewer has to say get the phone in your hand and try it out for yourselves that's the main reason why they have return policies because if you get a device and you're not feeling it, or if the device isn't functioning as advertised, then you have an opportunity to return that device and get a full refund and you can check out some other options. Okay, but for me and how I've been using this device, everything has been nice and smooth. As you can see. Uh, I am connected to my Wi-Fi now, and so there will be a bit of a difference, you know, you know, when it's connected to LTE. You know, depending on your signal strength with your Wi-Fi or LTE, I mean, you know, it could be a little faster when connected to Wi-Fi or it could be a little faster when connected to your LTE network. Um, but nonetheless, for me, I've got a nice and smooth, seamless experience while it's either connected to LTE or my Wi-Fi. OK, now one of the I don't want to say one of the drawbacks, you know, with this device, I feel like, you know, because of the fact that I have been. Um, 
I have been rocking with devices that only have, you know, that, that are fresh out of the box with the Oreo update, some devices, Oreo 8.1, I've kind of gotten used to how things look and feel, you know, with Android Oreo, but this doesn't have Oreo. This is still running Android 7.1 Nougat. Um, and so I'm not exactly sure if an update is going to be pushed out for this device for it to get the, uh, the Oreo update. But for now, out of the box, you're going to get 7.1 Nougat. And so it's kind of back to, you know, that, that, that particular, um, that particular setup. And it's not to say that that's a bad thing. Um, but I've just gotten so used to the way things look, you know, when you go to the settings, everything's nice and customized. It's a much shorter list, um, as opposed to how things look here. Uh, when you go to the settings menu and 7.0 Nougat. And so, um, but you know, aside from that, I mean, that's not even a knock on the phone. I mean, you know, that's just what it is. It's not to say that the device is bad. It's not to say that it performs, you know, any, any, any slower or faster because of that, you know, it just is what it is. Um, but, um, I, 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 me personally, I mean, that would be a very, very welcomed feature, you know, um, uh, because I think that it would definitely enhance things a bit as it has on other devices once they got the Oreo update. Um, and so we'll see, you know, down the road, you know, if it gets that update. In fact, if it does, then trust and believe I'll be right back here doing another video just to kind of review things, you know, with the with the Oreo update. Uh, but for now, we've got um, 7.1 Nougat um, and, you know, things things are moving. Things are moving fine. You know, nothing, nothing, um, no problems at all whatsoever. You can see opening applications opening applications you know those things aren't going to be as you know it's not going to be as fast and snappy as some of the you know big flagship devices and even some of the some of the mid-range devices that got some of these you know uh, other processors in them are you know top more top tier processors if you will because I don't want to I don't want to knock MediaTek because MediaTek does make some good um, some good processors but I've you know I don't want to get put in that category a lot of people feel like you know phones that have MediaTek processors they don't really perform all that well and so forth and so you know I've had a phone or two that has a MediaTek processor in it and one of them wasn't really the best but the other one was buttery smooth and you know this is not really any different you know I mean it's 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 nice and smooth. I mean, you'll get the occasional little stutter every now and then here and there, but it's not something that's noticeable. It's not something that's, you know, that's really problematic. You know, it's not something that's going to make you feel as though something's going on with the device. You know, now if your phone is defective, then yeah, I mean, you can expect some of that type of stuff, but day-to-day -day usage, uh, usage, web browsing, opening and closing applications, you know, watching movies and stuff like that, all that stuff is gonna be just fine on the new G3 here. Okay, now the cameras, we've got a 13 megapixel selfie camera and on the rear, we do have a dual camera system. We've got a 13 megapixel primary and a five megapixel secondary lens that is specifically for depth information. Um, I just actually uploaded this morning, here it is, uh, yeah, it's Friday, May 18th, but just this morning I uploaded the uh, camera video, so be sure to check that out, and that goes into much more detail about the camera here. That video is called New G3 forward slash the camera. You know, I keep it nice and simple, so make sure you guys go and check that out. You know, I've got some still shot footage of just still images, video footage of the front and rear camera, along with some of the features and functions and different modes and things that the camera can shoot in. So, um, no 4K recording, but you can record in full 1080p. Um, and you know, 4K recording, probably why I wasn't really expecting that on a device that cost $199 uh, anyway. So you kind of got to keep, you know, you got to be realistic about, you know, what to expect, you know, when you're getting, you know, a budget device. But don't think for a second that just because a phone is a budget device that it's not packing anything or working with anything that may be useful to you. Because, in fact, these phones are chock full of features and functions and things that you wouldn't believe got thrown into a device that costs so little. Um so um, make sure you check out that camera video. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments. All right. Now, the battery life, as I mentioned, 3,000 milliamp hour battery. Me personally, I haven't had a problem getting through a full day's worth of charge um, on this battery. You know, I can very easily make it through a full 24 hours and still have some juice left over, you know, for the next day. Now, it's not going to last as long as some of the other devices out there. Um, <clears throat> You do have battery optimizations to be able to squeeze a little bit more juice out of the battery if that's what you need to do. But, you know, I think that 3,000 milliamps is going to be solid, you know, 
for just about anybody. Well, I can't say just about anybody because a lot of that is dependent on how you use your device. But me, I'm more of a moderate, lightweight user, so it's nothing for me to get through a full day with 3,000 milliamps. Some people, depending on how you use your phone, if you're on it all the time, texting, social media, movies, downloading, streaming, all that kind of thing, you know, if you're just, you know, a multimedia beast with it, then you might want to carry the quick charger. Um, this does come with a Type-C port, which is down here at the bottom. It does support uh, a quick charge capability. Um, I was able to charge this phone from zero to 100% in about an hour and 20 minutes. Um, so, you know, it's not going to be, you know, super fast. It's not going to be like a Huawei or Honor device. It's not going to be like an Asus or a OnePlus device where you got the dash charge and all that kind of thing. But the battery is doable. It definitely charges fast enough. All right. So be mindful of that. Um, now, additional features. This phone surprisingly does a lot of different little things. Like, for instance, I like it, you know, some phones, they have like the double tap to put the screen to sleep and the double tap to wake it up. Well, if you want to wake up this device, um, well, it doesn't have the double tap to wake it up, but the home button right there, you just double tap that and that puts the phone to sleep. All right. We got the fingerprint sensor here on the rear, which is not super fast. You definitely have to rest your finger on it, but it does work. And so you rest your finger on it and then it just opens up. As you can see, it wasn't the fastest. We do have facial recognition. Unfortunately, you can't enable the fingerprint sensor and facial recognition at the same time. So, you know, the facial recognition, you know, it's kind of hit or miss. And so, you know, sometimes it works, you know, all the time, other times not so much. And so I just chose the rock with the fingerprint sensor, but you do have the ability to secure your device using facial recognition. I mean, who would have thought that that would have been on a device that cost $199? We do have, since this is a 5.7 inch panel, you know, this may be a bit cumbersome to some people, 18 by 9 aspect ratio. We do have one handed mode, so you just simply swipe across the bottom capacitive keys to bring it up to the much smaller screen so you can easily manage it with one hand and if you want to get out of that you see just hit the little arrow there to switch sides and if you want to go back then you just swipe in the opposite direction to bring it back up to the full 18 by 9 aspect ratio so you swipe right on the capacitive keys to get to the one-handed mode and then you swipe left to bring it back to full 18 by 9 all right now another cool feature that I like with this device is you have the ability to um, do you know you can control things there's gestures with the fingerprint sensor and so <clears throat> yeah when you go into your settings and you go to fingerprint and you oh my bad hit accounts hit fingerprint and then here's your fingerprint manager okay so this is where you can you know just add more fingers you know to unlock your device as you wish but then you've got these other little touch gestures as well with the fingerprint so you've got one touch you've got return to previous screen on touch and hold back to home screen recent task take a photo or video and so these are some pretty cool features you know to be able to do with the fingerprint sensor now we don't have the option to be able to you know swipe down or up to bring down the notification bar and all that kind of thing but these are some pretty useful features you know what i mean with the fingerprint sensor and you can turn them on if that's something that you desire to do now me i keep these things off because let's see like for me like my banking applications i've got you know several different accounts you know sound credit union chase paypal my adsense key bank google pay cash app um, and so the thing is, since I've got a fingerprint sensor and able to be able to get into my device or get into my banking and do online banking, then I just enter my fingerprint and I'm able to get into my accounts and start doing my banking as I need to. Well, if you have on those gestures like tap and hold or just tap the, the, the fingerprint sensor to go back to your previous screen or to your home screen. If you're trying to get into like your banking app or something like that with your fingerprint, then as soon as you tap the fingerprint, it's going to automatically go back to your home screen or the previous screen, whatever you got it set as. And so I found it to be a little bit of an annoyance. And so I just turn those features off. Okay. Um, now, if we go back into settings and then you see we do have system gestures, we have the typical 
you know, uh, uh, hand gestures where you can slide to capture a screenshot, slide to launch the camera. You can slide to adjust the volume. Now, that's a pretty neat feature. You know, you slide your fingers up to increase the volume, slide your fingers down on the screen to decrease the volume. And you just press firmly on the screen, not too hard because you don't want to crack it, but enough, enough for the screen to know that there's pressure being added. And depending on the direction in which you move your finger up or down, that will toggle the volume up or down. That's pretty neat. All right. Double tap to lock, which is what I already showed, the, the home button right there. And then you double tap the home button to launch the camera. And so, you know, those are some gestures that we've seen on many other devices, but it's also good to know that those are implemented here if those are something that you wanted to take advantage of. So, ladies and gentlemen, my final thoughts overall of the new mobile G3. Is it the budget king? I can't really say that it is the budget king because I think that the Xiaomi Redmi 5 Plus is still a force to be reckoned with at the $199 price point. And even the Huawei Mate SE, well, I know that's a little bit more. I think that's like $229.99 or something like that, but pretty close. Um, but I think that this is a really, really good option for anybody that wants a, a budget device. And think about it, I mean, for the money, you're getting the new 18 by 9 aspect ratio. Okay, you're getting solid cameras on the front and back. Also forgot to mention that the cap, the front facing 13 megapixel sensor that does have a front facing flash. I mean, so if you're trying to capture photos in low light situations, you can enable that flash button light, light, you know, light up whatever you're trying to capture. And you do have the ability to get a better shot, you know, because of the light that um, that LED light uh, 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 um, provides. Um, so, you know, you got front face, front facing flash, you've got the new 18 by nine aspect ratio, you know, you're getting, you know, all the gestures, you're getting a beautiful, beautiful, let, look, let me take this thing out of, the, out of, out of this case here, man. One second, because undoubtedly this device is visually stunning. Look at this. I mean, if you didn't know the price point of this phone, you would not look at this device and say that phone is hundred is is two hundred bucks. You just wouldn't look at this. I mean, the way that it shimmers when you move it from side to side. I mean, this device is definitely a head turner. It, I mean, it's it's a head turner. You know, so for one ninety nine, as I mentioned, you're getting this design. You're getting the new aspect ratio. You're getting some nice performing cameras with the front facing flash. You're getting type C connective um, connectivity. You're getting four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of onboard storage. You're getting the MediaTek Helio P25 processor. You've got all those gestures, solid performance. All at the precious price of 199. Yeah. Is it a go? I'd have to say so. This is a really, really good option in the 199 price point. Like I said, there are some other out there, you know, there's some others out there that are competing really well with the new mobile G3. But I think that, you know, new mobile, hey, we get the point, man. This is a solid, this is a solid device, and I can definitely recommend it. All right. I understand other people made videos and they slammed the device, but keep in mind, everybody's experience isn't gonna be the same. All right. Somebody may have a phone and I may have that same phone and their experience may be terrible and my experience may be great. So the best way possible to try out a device is to get it in your hands, test it out for yourselves. All right. All right. Let me know what you guys think about this video in the comments, man. That's all I got for you. This is the new mobile G3. You already know if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. Share the video with anybody that you know may be in the market for a new smartphone. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to expose yourself to tons of videos that I've done like this one. And definitely keep it locked here at Pristine Mobile Tech because I've got tons of more content to come. Make sure you hit that notification bell to be the first to view my content whenever I upload it so you can be the first to witness it. Check it out. Leave me any feedback at all whatsoever, questions, concerns about that particular video, phone, whatever it is that I'm reviewing at that moment. And keep it locked here at Pristine Mobile Tech. Again, much love to all my subscribers. We're going to keep this thing moving, man. All right? So you guys definitely stay safe. Get spiritually fit. We're definitely living in the last days. And keep it pristine in every aspect of your lives. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.